Our adventure in France began from the shores of England. We set off on the ferry leaving the beautiful white chalk cliffs behind us. We took our car with us. It was my first time driving abroad and it felt amazing. Narrow streets of ancient towns were very similar to those in England. Only people drove on the right-hand side. However, some streets were so small that you couldn't even tell the difference. This was the place where we stayed. This was the magnificent view we had. The sense of scale is hard to convey in this shot, but the little stones you see down there on the beach are gigantic boulders. We have set our camp on the edge of this picturesque cliff top. The first large city we have visited was Rouen. The city was very comfortable to drive through and it was a bliss to park at. This is Le Gros Horloge, a large 14th century astronomical clock. This is a picture of unprecedented beauty and an image of Renaissance. This is the magnificent Rouen Cathedral. No words could describe this grandiose beauty. It's just nice to look at it and absorb. Joanne of Arc claimed that she received visions from Archangel Michael, Saint Margaret, and St. Catherine of Alexandria, who instructed her to recover France from English domination. It is here that she was tragically executed. This is real Rouen, Rouen without tourists. Little courtyards like this one are very illustrative of the city. The 
historical city is like a maze of beautiful cobbled streets. Despite the considerable age, the city doesn't feel old, it feels very much alive. We could see its vibrant energy even in the area which is hundreds of years old. And of course the coffee shop. Just look at that variety of traditional coffee makers. Ornamental details like those are simply everywhere. To be honest, it's quite hard to step away from the hustle and bustle of the city to appreciate the detail of the ornate craft work. And then we went to see Hornfleur. This is Hornfleur and its most picturesque old port. The slate-covered frontages of colorful houses serve as inspiration and feature in many works by many artists. The first record of Hornfleur goes all the way back to 1027. And those houses do look like they're models or art objects in themselves. We then went to see St. Catherine's Church. Its oldest parts date back all the way to late 15th century. The church is made of wood using the techniques which were used to build ships. It looks so spacious and welcoming inside, it's pretty incredible and certainly very unusual for that time period. And those are the streets of Honfleur. There were no tourists at all. It seemed to me that if the shops end and cafes end, nobody goes there. 
we couldn't believe how quiet it was. Even cars reflected the essence of local spirit. And this is, well, pure grace. We were really lucky to see those vintage cars. They were loud and smelled like days gone by. Back into the crowds we go to get some morangs before we set off to our next destination. We set off to explore Deauville, which was only a stone's throw away from where we stayed. Deauville is famous for its race course, which is located pretty much right next to Villa Strasburger. This amazing historical landmark is Villa Strasburger. It was built in 1907 in neo-Norman style. I absolutely love the striking combinations of color like red and green, very much like flowers which grow around the villa itself. Deauville is a wonderful resort, which really has it all for a great holiday. And there are some really quirky cars too. Ornate cobbled work is beautiful.
small boutiques have so much variety. The food scene is incredible. Our next destination was Le Havre. We stopped on the way to get some food and saw this self-service kiosk. Needless to say, we were compelled to explore. This is the city of Le Havre. Unlike the places we have visited earlier, this city has a very modern and grandiose feel. It had very similar planning solutions and elements as Novosibirsk, the city I was born in. And now we're back in Trouville. We simply enjoyed the beautiful streets and detail-rich, colorful villas by the sea. This is the fish market. The great thing about it is that the fish or shellfish you buy there can also be served to you right across the walk. It certainly doesn't get any fresher than this.
the atmosphere of local cafes was incredible. Villaville is a tiny place where we met a really friendly local lady who even invited us to show her beautiful cottage. This quirky place was the last village we have visited on that trip. Next day, we set off back to England and the white cliffs of Dover greeted us again. I hope you enjoyed this piece and I hope you enjoyed this trip together with us. Until next week, I shall see you later. Bye-bye.